Welcome back to the channel. Black voters sound off about Vice President Kamala Harris. So it's just not me talking. I'm just not the only voice out here talking about the Vice President. You have some voters who are actually going to go out and actually decide this election that have things to say about her, that are pointing out the things that are obvious to most people, but not so obvious to those people who are beholden to the Democratic Party. No matter what happens, they're going to vote for Kamala Harris. And it is in, in, it's very informative what, how they feel because they actually feel the way, you know, most black people feel, but some are afraid to say what they feel. But these particular voters that MSNBC had an opportunity to talk to actually said exactly what I've been trying to say, but they said it in their own way. And without further ado, go ahead and roll it. And I, uh, let me start with the women here about Kamala Harris. She's a woman of color. I'm not putting her down because of that. And I'm not putting her down because she's a woman. I'm not a feminist, so I'm sorry. But at the end of the day, I don't think that she has the personality. I don't think that she has what it takes to go up against Putin and go up against these other presidents that are built for this. I don't want to be scared because my president is scared. I want my president to feel secure and manly and about it we brought up gender right so if you if you're thinking about sitting across from putin or chi from china or the iranian delegation you know in, in a muslim country who don't respect women at all and on the other side you have vice president kamala harris do you honestly think in your heart of hearts that they are would be afraid of her the way she comes off, the way she cackles when she laughs. You know, you got to go in there and be cutthroat. You got to be a, you got to be concise and a type A personality. Like my stuff don't stink and I'm going to take you down if you don't agree with what I'm saying. That's the type of personality you got to go in there with. You got to push these people aside. Like this is the United States and nobody's going to bully us. That's the type of attitude you got to walk in with. They got to feel that presence when you walk into the room. Do you think they feel that when Kamala Harris walks into the room? Barring the fact that she's a female, who cares what, what her gender is? But just that aura around her when she steps into the room, they got to feel that this is the United States and they're going to respect what we have to say. And for the last three and a half years, nobody has respected the United States. They haven't respected Biden and they definitely haven't respected Kamala Harris because she's been hiding. This whole election cycle, she's been had scripted questions. The, uh, the last interview that she had, the audience wasn't allowed to ask her any questions, but they had selected questions that they would ask her. What type, what type of leader is that where you can't answer questions from any and everybody in the audience if you open it up for people to ask you questions? A real leader will take any question posed to them and give an answer that can exude that confidence and leadership. You don't see that in Kamala Harris. Like, do you think yeah. it matters that she's a woman and people aren't comfortable having a woman in a top leadership role? No, I don't no. think that because most men, they, they love their mothers. They love their wives. So yeah. as a woman, most men, they respect the woman, but she just don't have the qualification or the education to really run America because she don't have the experience. She don't understand our struggles. And for me to believe you for another four years, you're crazy. Right. Like you're crazy. You're saying the same thing that you said four years ago. So the fact that she's the vice president that's to just you, the bottom honest, line. you're like, you've been here, you've had a chance. Yes. Well, for me, the very first time I ever heard the name Kamala Harris, it was an association to locking up parents for a truancy. Mm -hmm. That was the first time I, I ever heard of her name. And I, I really didn't understand how this person claims to be a black woman, but yet she's locking up black women and black men and separating families. This is the thing that is, Trump talks about this a lot. He says, you know, Kamala Harris became black right. when it was mm -hmm. convenient. Right. Yep. Can you, can you talk to me about, do you feel, do you agree with him on that? Do you feel oh, like she's wearing her blackness? Absolutely. She's sworn into the, when she's sworn to the Senate, it was as the first Indian American. Thank you. Now I want y'all to go back and do some research, Google, 
the first Indian president, Kamala Harris, and see what pops up. She didn't identify as a black woman. She identified herself as an Indian. Now that she's running for the office of president, she all of a sudden now she's black. You know, whatever your, your racial ethnicity is, it's fine by me. But don't fake like you one thing when you're actually another. Just like that white woman who thought she was black was with the NAACP. Now all of a sudden we realize she was white. Don't do that. Just be who you are. Be Indian. Be who you are. And we'll accept you. But when you're trying to be something you're not, then the truth has to come out about it. People have to show you that you ain't who you say you are because you can't relate to the black community. No black that I've ever known, and I grew up down south, we didn't wash collard greens in the bathtub. They were washed in the sink. Just saying. Which is, it's fine. We don't care. We all know she's not black. Let's understand that. We we are all clear of that. But well, my that, point of view is, like I told you earlier, she's already been there. She's in office right now. Boom. You're already there. You're already in the position of power for the last three and a half years. All of these policies that you talking about, you want to implement as a next administration. And when The View asked you, what would you have done differently? You say, I, I can't think of anything that I would have done differently than the Biden administration, than the Biden-Harris administration that I will do in the Harris and Walsh administration. So why should we elect you as the next president when you're not going to do anything different than Biden? You're going to leave the border open. You're still going to push the Green New Deal. You're still going to cut down production of oil here in the United States, which means every other thing that comes that falls from that transportation to the goods to the store. Everything is going to be higher because everything is driven by the oil. If it costs more to 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 get that vehicle to drive those goods to the store, then that store owner has to raise the cost of the goods in order to make a profit off of it. That's just common economics. Higher gas prices higher food costs, higher energy costs, because the people who are driving the product have to make a profit as well. Is the light bulb coming on, people? Energy is the source of all of this high cost that we have to pay. And the Biden administration is doing that through regulation and the ability to stifle those who are producing the energy. It's just that simple. These black people have said what I've been saying all along, irregardless of the fact she's not black, irregardless of the fact that we're in a situation where we have a, a, a difference between two candidates. One candidate wants to, to drill, baby drill, and the other candidate wants to stifle oil production. You have what you have. You have a vote. And you're going to decide whether we're going to go forward or we're going to stay where we are stagnant with high costs. You make the decision. But let me know what you think down in the comments. If you can like this video, hit the like button. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing to the Retired Vet Show. Turn on the notifications so you know when I post another video. And as always, God bless you all. Stay safe.